Hello, everyone. You are listening to the Untapped Mana Podcast. I am your host, Palmer Snell, and I hope you can join me today as we dive into the wonderful world of Magic the Gathering. So today is another continuation of the Outlaws of Thunder Junction with the pre-release starting next week. Cannot wait for this. The set looks amazing. I'm very, very excited for it. And we're going to talk a little bit just about the past of this podcast. We just hit episode 10. That's a big milestone. There's still people listening, and I and I really appreciate it. So a big thank you to that. We're going to talk about the future of the show and what it entails, but mostly it's going to be about the Outlaws of Thunder Junction, thus including the tokens, the deck lists that have been leaked this week, or not leaked, but kind of shown during the spoiler season, what's new with the list, which is actually very, very surprising, showing that we're going to be told kind of what's on the list, which is usually something we don't really know about, and it's just random cards. And then some of the art cards from Outlaws. And last but not least, talking about the new Secret Lair. It's not dropped yet, but we still know a little bit about it. So if you're ready, then sit back, relax, grab a bag of popcorn, and enjoy the show. So starting off today's episode, there is a lot that has been released this week about the pre-cons for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So diving on into it, we're going to start with Desert Bloom, which is the first, which is a green, red, and white pre-constructed deck for the set. There's a lot of cool stuff in this deck, and something new that they're adding to the pre-cons is that the main commander has an alternate art that you get in the box, which I think is really cool, and I honestly... Really wish they've done that starting a while ago, because I try to always collect the cooler version of the commander that comes out, usually in the main set. For example, my Doctor Who, I tried to get the TARDIS variant of my commander, so I wish those just came in the pre-con, so it's nice they're starting this now. But, with Desert Bloom, the commander is Yuma, Proud Protector, it is a 5 colorless, 1 red, 1 green, 1 white, Human Ranger. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each land card in your graveyard. Whenever Yuma enters the battlefield or attacks, you may sacrifice a land if you do draw a card. And then whenever a card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, create a 4-2 green plant warrior creature, to creature token with reach. So this guy looks pretty cool. The, the alternate art looks so, so good. If you want to check it out, definitely go to magic.wizards.com. Go to their announcements page. It should be under the Outlaws of Thunder Junction commander deck lists. This is where I'm getting all the information from. The card looks so good. But the second commander, which is just a normal, you know, nothing fancy, it is actually the creature that Yuma is holding in his arm. So that's in his arm. So that's pretty cool. So it's Kiri, Talented Sprout, a one colorless, one red, green, and white plant druid. Other plants and tree folk you control get plus two, plus oh. At the beginning of your post combat main phase, return target plant, tree folk, or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So looking on into this deck, there is a lot that it has and honestly i was really surprised in looking through it so the creatures we're gonna get a sun titan which is a nice giant that we'll get but then the omnath locus of rage which is a crazy cool card i was not expecting to see and a scoot swarm which again it's, it's just it's like a five dollar card but still great cards to see in pre-cons it'll be very exciting to get all these cards tons of other ones like tatiana protector of argoth i think i'm saying that right that's going to be here. That's another Mythic, Avenger Zendikar. Again, lots of really good cards added to these pre-cons. So it looks like Magic and Wizards are really stepping up their game with this set, with the different Commander decks. I'm very excited for it. Again, 100 cards, you know, normal Commander deck. You have your main Commander and then your secondary Commander. You choose which one you want, and you put the other into your deck. Lots of new cards and lots of new tokens, which is really cool, and a special Elemental token that looks just like the Omnath Locus of Rage art. So that'll be nice. It looks like a full art of that. So, very nice token. There's some new ones with some new arts, and the bounty mechanic will be in this deck as well. So those are the Commander minigames. Some Commander decks actually have a full, like, you use the bounties to make your deck work. So that'll be really cool, and we're going to see how that works. But heading to the next deck, the Quick Draw, commanded by Stella Lee Wildcard. A one colorless green, not green, red and blue. I don't know what I'm talking about. Human Rogue, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. That's a really cool thing, so not at the end of your turn, but at the beginning of your next turn, until your next turn, the end of it, you're going to be able to play cards from the top of your deck. So that's that's really nice, you know, flash cards, your instants. So 
This reminds me of the niv Mizza deck. I love those decks playing a lot of instants and sorceries, but that is what red and blue do, so no really surprise to me. But the secondary is tap top copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Activate only if you've cast three or more spells this turn. So that's interesting. Kind of a free copy if you've cast three or more. So, you know, if you're playing really low cost things, that's really nice to be able to copy that. The secondary commander is Eris, Roar the Storm, an eight colorless, one blue, one red, elemental warlock. This spell costs two less to cast for each different mana value card among instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. It has flying and prowess. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, create a 4-4 four, four red dragon elemental creature token with flying and prowess. So, a cool secondary. Again, expensive if you don't have those different mana costs. So, I think if I'm going to get this deck, I'm going to stick to the Stella Lee wild card. Let's check out what's actually in the deck. There's lots of cool stuff. A lot of creatures coming back that we haven't seen in a bit. A lot of stuff from Double Masters. And a lot of stuff from Strixhaven. So, that's kind of nice to see. Niv Mizzet is in this deck. The Param, a really good card, was just reprinted in Ravnica Remastered. One of my favorite cards. I know a lot of my friends play it, and it's really fun to see. And Gutter Snipe is making a return, so that's nice to see. <laughs> I just noticed this. Third Path Iconoclast. That is actually one of my favorite commanders for the Popper format, which is Common Commander and then all or Uncommon Commander, and then all Common Cards in your deck. So that's why I play the Third Path Iconoclast. Pretty cool card to see. A lot of good sorceries, a lot of good instants. That's where most of your good stuff is going to be. Cool to see some cards also from sets super recent. We're going to get another Ponder in this set. So with that card just getting re-put into some formats, uh, we're going to see a price increase for that. It's already at $3, which is still crazy for a common card. Midnight Clock is in this really good card. And of course your Soul Ring and your other instants and sorceries and equipments. But lots of really cool cards coming in this. Now, in the last deck, there was a lot of deserts as lands. Now, this deck does not have as many deserts. It's more just double land cards and basic my mountains and islands. So that's kind of what you're going to get a majority of. But the last deck had a lot of deserts, which was really cool to see. Nice to always see those cards coming back that haven't been shown in a while. And... We're going to get a lot of cool tokens in this deck, which my favorite is being a 3-3 green ape. So I wonder if there's any cards from the red, cards that I'll be able to use for my Kibo deck, which is all about making monkeys and everything like that. So very excited to see what this deck entails. Not the one I was most interested in. Um, I'm getting another one, which is the one coming next, which is Grand Larceny. But these first two look really good. But now onto the deck I'm most excited for. The Grand Larceny. It is a black, green, and blue. It is commanded by Gaunti. Canny Acquisitor is a two colorless, one black, green, and blue. It is an Aetherborn Rogue. Spells you cast, but don't own, cost one less to cast. So that's really nice. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card. For as long as it remains exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. And the altar looks beautiful. I can't wait to see this in the deck when I get it. I will have a deck breakdown when I get my hands on it. Very excited. But the other commander is Felix Five Boots, which is a two colors, one black, green, and blue. It is an Og Rogue. Ooze Rogue. It has Menace and War 2. If a creature you control dealing combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger... That ability triggers an additional time. What's funny is this actually looks like the Omnath art. It was April Fool's. It was going around in a lot of the Magic communities. If any of you saw it, everyone was blown away because this was just like such a crazy card. It's funny that the art actually looks just like this one. So alternate commander, I'm definitely going to use the Aetherborn Rogue, the Gaunti. I mean, it just looks so cool, and I like that ability a lot. Diving into the deck, lots of cards from... The Zendikar Rising set, which I actually just did a breakdown of that deck, uh, not of the deck, of the set with opening a couple packs a couple weeks ago. So I really, really like all the stuff in there. A lot of cool cards like the Oran Frostfang is coming in this deck. Lots of really cool stuff. I'm just taking a look and through it. Ooh, Hostage Taker. That's a great card. Yeah, lots of good cards. couple Mythics. The, the Minoplasm, that's another card that I know a lot of 
my friends want and actually use, and a couple Eldrazi are coming in this deck. So that's, this should be really interesting. Can't wait to get my hands on it. A lot of cards that basically say take cards from other people. This deck is all about taking other people's stuff and not giving it back and just using it. So definitely will be interesting to see how this deck works. I'll have a breakdown once I get my hands on it. Again, very excited for it. Heading on to the final deck, which is the most wanted. It is a one colorless, one red, white, and black. It is a vampire assassin with flying and lifelink. Whenever one or more outlaws you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. And then assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks are outlaws. So we've talked about that the last episode. If you want to know more, definitely go check that out, episode 9. And you can pay 3 to sacrifice 2 treasure, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each creature you control, activate only as a sorcery. So, really cool vampire. And then the alternate um, commander is a red, white, and black. It is a dwarf warlock. Love the art on this. Other outlaws you control have vigilance and haste. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, you may have... Treasure tokens you control become 3-3 three, three Construct Assassin Artifact Creatures in addition to their other types until in a turn. So that's really interesting. You're going to be taking all of your treasures and your the tokens you have and turning them into creatures. So that can be really scary if you are able to get a ton of different treasure tokens. And a lot of cards in this deck looks like they're all about creating treasure tokens. So I'm definitely taking a look. There's only three instants in this deck, which I find kind of funny. And Massacre Girl. That's a very interesting card to throw into this. So, again, just reprinted in the Ravnica Remastered, but Outlaw Girl, or Massacre Girl, is getting thrown into this deck. So that should be really interesting to see. Lots of really cool cards. I'm just taking a look really quickly through them. Ooh, Academy Manufacturer. Holy crap, that's a, that's a pretty expensive card to be reprinted. Is it a rare from Modern Horizons 2? If you would create a clue, food, or creature token, instead create one of each. So, that's a really nice card. Uh, we'll be interested to see what the price does to that. And then, looking through the instance, you get a couple instants. And again, just a couple artifacts. Lightning Greaves getting reprinted in this. It looks like that card is kind of losing its value in a sense. Now it's only like 5 bucks, but it's always been about that. But it's basically been put in every precon. It's such a good card. Everyone really should need it. And we're going to get the Mercenary tokens in this in this deck so it looks like lots of cool stuff kind of looking just through all of the different tokens these ones also have different bounties all the different decks have different bounties so there is going to be there's three so that's 12 in total of different bounties that you're going to be able to get really interesting mechanic i definitely want to get some gameplay and once i do that i'll let you all know how it works and actually how it does in the sense of magic itself so diving into a couple release notes there's not really much Basically just saying that all the cards in this set are going to be able to be played in Standard, Pioneer, Modern, and other formats as well, including Commander. Certain cards like the Big Score will be also in Standard, Pioneer, Modern, and Commander. The cards from the OTC, which is some more of the Commander cards, um, will only be in Commander, Legacy, and Vintage. The last was the Big Score, which is a 30-card set, so those are only going to be in the Standard, Pioneer, Modern, and Commander. And then some of the breaking news cards. These cards are legal for play in any other format that allow the cards with the same name. So that'll be nice. And then the special guest cards will be legal in the same scenario where if they're allowed in the other format, then they are allowed in the format itself because it's just a reprint of a card. So not many news with release notes. But looking into the art cards of the set, it looks like there's only going to be 54 art cards in the set. Most of the time, sets have about 80. So it's about a 30-card decrease these cards look great. My personal favorite is the Lone Shark, which is 6 out of 54. It is literally a shark in a suit. I just, I think that's amazing, and that's hilarious. Lone Shark, it's a play on words. But these art cards look amazing. A lot of signatures on each of them. And the art cards for the lands as well will also have that. So that'll be nice if you just want to play those in a deck. I don't think anybody's going to care. You'll basically get full art lands, which is really nice. And... All the special art cards coming, like the Mana Drain and the Path to Exile, will all also have art cards. So if you want to play your full art cards, if people don't care you're playing an art card, that'll be nice to have in the decks. Can't wait to see those. I've always been a huge fan of any art cards put in sets. So the Equinox Secret Lair is not out yet, but there's a couple cards that were shown, which is the Codex Shredder for the Fallout and the Wastes and the Mana Vault. So those are three cards you may be able to get when you buy a Secret Lair. They're kind of a secret card. You'll get a little pack. And one of those three can happen. The Mana Vault, of course, being the one that will be the most rare. But those are some cards that are shown off 
at least that you can get from your secret layer if you do choose to buy that. Some other cards that were shown off was a Point of Interest, which is another secret layer drop, which will come with the Command Beacon, Bazooka Bog, Fabled Passage, the Reliquary Tower, and a Reflecting Pool. And the Vault Boy, which will come with Vault Boy Cap Collector, Trinosaphere, Winter Orb, and the Sphere of Resistance. And the one I've already shown off, the Special, which comes with seven different cards? Yeah, looking at the post, seven different cards. Very excited about that. I've actually talked about those in a later episode or a past episode, so definitely go check those out. But hopefully the Secret Lair comes out soon. I've been waiting so long for it, but those are some more cards that we'll have a chance to be able to get and ones that we may even get lucky enough to pull if we get a Secret Lair. So we'll see what else comes with the set, but it's mostly going to be a drop based the Fallout series with the Precons and the Collector Packs. Going to take a quick ad break to thank Zeke's Comics and Games for being the sponsor of the show and this episode. Zeke's Comics and Games is a store in Washington, Illinois. They also have an online presence at their website, which is linked in my Instagram bio on my link tree. They have everything nerd-related from cards to comics to miniatures. A great, great store. Again, thank you to sponsoring this episode and this whole channel. They actually gave us a pre-constructed commander deck from Ixalan. I cannot wait to give it away. I have the winner of that precon at the end of this video so definitely stay in tune and I have a poster giveaway also at the end of the episode so keep on listening to see if you won I'll also announce it on my Instagram thank you for entering if you did enter and definitely check out Zeke's Comics Games their TCG player and their actual website in my link tree in my Instagram description so looking into the list of this set Magic itself has said that you will find cards more frequently in the Outlaws of Thunder Junction play boosters than at the Murders at the Karloff Manor because they, the list will be replacing common one out of five packs, which that's you're going to be getting a lot. So basically, any cards from the list of Outlaws has, has 40 cards. There's 30 Mythic Rares from the Big Score and 10 Mythic Rares from the Special Guests. The Special Guest cards are reprints with new art reimagined in the style of Thunder Junction. You'll find non-foil Special Guest cards, one out of 64 play boosters, which that's a crazy number. Traditional foil Special Guest cards can be found in collector packs. Kind of same goes for MTG Arena. There's going to be a kind of one to five pack rarity for these different list cards. So the big score and the special guest. So that'll be really nice to see. And the cards will be legal in the Commander Legacy and Vintage with some being available in Modern and Pioneer. So definitely have to check that out. And Standard, of course. Definitely have to check these out. And we'll kind of find out more when people are able to open products to see kind of what the hit rates are and... I'm going to be opening about 18 packs of the set, so I'll be able to see out of about half a booster box what we're going to be able to get from these packs. So for the last little bit of news, I'd just like to give a huge thank you to anyone still listening. We just hit episode 10. This is awesome. Can't wait for the future. Here's to 10 more episodes. Now, I've kind of talked through these last 10 episodes about two different sets. I've had some fun episodes where I talk about different cards and different you know, items like sleeves and stuff. So I want everyone's feedback. Let me know in my comments of YouTube, Instagram, wherever you're listening, wherever wherever you're able to give me comments, or if you want to send me a DM on Instagram, I'll respond to those. Just let me know what you like from this show and what you want maybe in the future. I'm hopefully going to get more opening products soon. I got a lot nicer equipment. Hopefully anyone will be able to check, like tell that I have new mics. Um, I did buy new mics, so hopefully this episode sounds better. I'm still testing it. I'm not great with technology, so, you know, keep 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 uh, keep listening because it will get better. But with the episodes of opening, I will be able to get better quality with a nicer camera and new lights that I got. So when Outlaws of Thunder Junction, I will debut my new setup, which I'm very, very excited for. And I'll hopefully get some video clips at my local game store pre-release, which is Zeke's Comics and Games. Definitely I'll be checking that out, giving you guys a video just because... If you want to see what a pre-release looks like and you're not able to go to one, you'll be able to see. So I will have a pre-release uh, pack opening on the channel as well, just so I don't have to play in the thing, so everyone can see what comes in the pre-release bundle. Very excited for that. So reaching the end of the episode, I have two giveaways that I will be announcing right now. The first one is for the Murders at the Karlov Manor poster. The winner of the poster is Danny Weasel on Instagram. So I will tag you in my most recent post and DM you to get more information on how you can win that poster. And the next winner is for the new commander deck that I gave away from the Lost Caverns of Ixon, the Explorers of the Deep. And the winner is Bullet underscore 347. I will also tag you in this week's post. 
and DM you on how I can get that to you. Thank you all for entering. I love doing giveaways. Hopefully I can do more in the future. Once I hit 100 followers on Instagram, TikTok, and 100 subscribers on YouTube, then I'll do a bigger giveaway. So once I hit 100 on all those platforms, I will do a giveaway, and I'll let everyone know in the episode what it'll be. So can't wait for that. So definitely share the podcast, share all my Instagram, you know, my TikTok, and the YouTube. Share it to your friends. Check that out, because once we hit that, there will be a big giveaway happening. Another huge thank you. 10 episodes has been great. I've said this in prior episodes. I love making this content. This is so much fun. Definitely give me some feedback feedback on how I can improve, what I can do, what you want to see, and what the future entails. I do know what it will, in the sense of my Twitch account, I will be starting streaming. Not a guaranteed date, but it will be starting around summer. So I will get that with Magic Arena and then Spell Table, so you can see some Magic live. If you want to check that out, definitely start following the Twitch. There's a link in my link tree. And I'd like to announce, in May... No specific date yet, but I will have that soon. We will have a 24-hour stream to support the ALS Foundation. May, The month of May is the ALS Foundation Awareness Month, so I will be donating any proceeds that are donated to me during that 24-hour stream. It will be on YouTube, hopefully Twitch, maybe Instagram. I'm still figuring out the logistics of it, but it will be a 24-hour stream of playing Magic, checking out card stores, and just enjoying the presence of people who love Magic. So... All proceeds will go to the ALS Foundation, a charity that is very near and dear to my heart. So if you want more information on that, I will be starting to post on the Instagram in the following weeks because they'll be at the later end of May. So definitely keep on the lookout for that. It's going to be a really fun time. Can't wait to do it. But I want to know in my comments for this week's episode, who is excited for this set? I know I asked that last week, but I'm starting to get really excited seeing all the leaks and spoilers that have been happening. So excited for this. Can't wait to see what the set entails once I actually open it and what I'm actually going to get. I'm hoping to get the Mana Drain, but I will take anything cool from this set. So, again, thank you for listening, and remember, never leave any mana untapped. That is, unless you're a blue player. Thank you again for listening, and have a great day.